I've spoken about mental health a lot over the years. I think I tricked myself into thinking that I was pretty robust and sorted, especially post him a celebrity, where I spoke about body dysmorphia and got to a much better place with that. But when the pandemic happened, it started spiraling into this position of being oh, I'm doomed. My career could be over. And those feelings of uncertainty paired with an increase in my alcohol and cannabis consumption, saw things get pretty intense. I lost a sense of direction, and I became quite unreachable to people close to me. Then in October, I went for a Sunday roast with our drummer and two other people, and it only had a couple of drinks, but I was smoking, and I kind of passed out. It really caught me off guard. Tristan was so good and sat with me for hours. And my wife got a call at 5 p.m. from him saying James is crying, and just all over the place. It was a real moment. I was like, I'm nearly 30, I've just fainted in front of loads of people. I look like an absolute mess. What am I doing? And from there, I sought help with the depression side of things. The weed stopped, and I didn't drink for a month or so. I've got a new song called Dancing on the Head of a Needle which looks back to that really dark time, and how sorry I was for being that person. But for me, that October and the year since then has been a real period of self-reflection and learning for me. So I'm grateful in a weird way because I know that I never want to be like that again. On his first solo show for Mind the last solo gig I did was aged 14 back in Dorset, so I'm terrified. I've put a band together around me, and Terry's five other people on stage, so I can try and blend in a little bit. But there's nowhere to hide. Previously, if I needed to burp or something on stage, it'd just go, oh, it's fine. Brad's singing. On his body dysmorphia in the depths of it, my life revolved around food, the continuous self-evaluation of whether I'm happy with my body. It wasn't from a point of vanity. I think it stemmed from a yearning to be in control of aspects of my life in an environment that was typically all over the place. My sense of trying to find control came in food and exercise. On having liposuction aged 19 my parents were really, really obviously not wanting me to do it. But I was 19 so the reality is I was sort of hell-bent on doing that. I probably should have looked inwards and been like, okay, why am I feeling the desire to do this? and there was no real conversation with the surgeons about whether maybe I should have some therapy or something instead on extreme eating while on tour I was consciously determining where we could or couldn't eat. We had a big touring party, and we'd be in the middle of nowhere in America, and we'd go to a restaurant, and all they had was like, pizza, and it'd be like, we can't eat here. And then if that was paired with not being able to go to the gym, I was just not a very nice person really. On bandmates not knowing about his condition we were young guys touring the world, and I think it was quite easy for us to just get swept up in the craziness. And they probably didn't realize how severe it was, but I think looking back now, we acknowledge that it was quite difficult. On talking about his mental health mental health now is discussed a lot within the vamps. And I think after 10 years with the band, you get a whole new sense of perspective and appreciation. But they've always been there for me. On how his wife saved him meeting my wife was quite a big thing because I couldn't live selfishly anymore. All of a sudden it was like, Okay, we need to go out for dinner and stuff. And I was like, well how am I going to get boiled chicken? You just don't really do that, right? 
On friendship with SAS instructor Foxy we drove around Namibia in the desert together in a Land Rover, speaking about mental health a lot, just us two in the car. I always wanted to be a soldier when I was six and to speak about mental health with someone Foxy for me, really helped me. On talking about mental health in Parliament I've been very lucky to play big shows with the vamps and stuff, but actually being sat in a room speaking to Jeremy Hunt and people like that was quite scary. And then I was thinking, God, the amount of tweets I've sent to slag off the Tories, and then I'm sat here. Listen to the podcast here. For support go to mind.org.uk. Tickets for James' solo show at London's Hoxton Hall on November 10th are on sale now. James Manabi EP is available to pre-order now.